I have been using shoe trays for many years, so I think I have a pretty good idea of what combination of style and material works well and what doesn't. In this video, I'll be going over some pros and cons of 6 different types I have encountered. But first, what are shoe trays? Shoe trays are inserts made to go in shoes when they aren't being worn to help maintain their original shape and prevent creases and cracking. They also wick away moisture and fight odors. These things can greatly extend the wear life of your shoes. In this first style of shoe tray, the toe part is divided into a large solid part and one smaller, connected by spiral springs. The large rounded heel part is connected to the toe pieces by a double spring bar mechanism and there's a metal knob at the heel provides leverage to pull the shoe tray out of the shoe. I bought these shoe trays when I got my custom-made Hoka Oxford years ago, but they are good for all real leather shoes, including sneakers. Shoe trays are often made of wood. This pair is cedar. In my opinion, the type of wood doesn't make up a huge difference, but whether the wood is varnished or unvarnished does. Unvarnished wood, which has a rougher texture, wicks away moisture and helps to fight odors. Varnished wood, which is smooth, may be more visually appealing, but has almost zero ability to keep your shoes dry and fresh. I really like the fit and support these shoe trees gave to all of the major area. The high vamp supports the upper end keeps the tongue in position, and the large rounded heel part perfectly hugs the inside of the heel. In this second style of unvarnished wood shoe trays, the toe part is divided into two equal parts, and is connected by a single spring bar mechanism to a narrow heel that has a thin leather pool. In this pair, there are no spring bars between the two toe pieces. you notice that this makes the toe parts a bit floppy, and the gap between them is pretty big when not in the shoe. However, when you insert these shoe trays, the middle spring bar that connects the toe and the heel start to contract, creating force to support the width of the toe box. Unfortunately, the wood heel part is too narrow to provide support to the left and right, and the relatively low upper doesn't really support the top of the shoe. It's pretty easy to remove the shoe tree with the leather pull attached to the heel, but I personally prefer the stability of a knob like the one in the first pair. The third pair of unvarnished shoe trays has a full, undivided toe part connected by a single large spiral spring to a wooden knob. The spring is quite large, so it produces a strong pressure at the front and back. The ventilation slits in the toe part, which help make the shoe tray lightweight, also help maximize the ability of the shoe tray to absorb moisture and fight odor. Now let's put it in a sneaker and see how the support shapes up. Remember to tilt the front of the shoe tray sideways when inserting it as the middle section of the shoe is usually narrower than the front area. Once the front is in position, bend the heel knob down and press it into the heel of the sneaker. This might require more force than any other types of shoe trays, but it's not too bad. As for the support, because of the high upper, the top of the sneaker gets very decent support, as well as the front toe box. However, the heel section doesn't provide as much support as other types of shoe trees. In fact, the downforce and the pressure created by the wood knob can be a pretty bad problem over time. Here's the inside of the shoe where the wood knob rests in position. You can see that the bottom of the heel is pressed on dramatically and the stitching of the heel is beginning to show. I didn't realize the damage these types of shoe trees could cause, but I stopped using them right away when I discovered it. Right now, I haven't figured out a way to repair the damage, but at least it won't get any worse. Personally, I don't recommend using this type of shoe trees, especially with leather sneakers. This is a lesson I learned and wanted to pass on. The fourth kind of shoe tree has a full, undivided toe, has a single spring bar mechanism and a rounded heel. It doesn't have a very tall upper. Some of the cheaper unvarnished shoe trays like this one are rougher around the edges as there probably wasn't as much care taken when they were being sanded. If you are only paying $10 for a pair of shoe trays, the chance of them being rough is almost guaranteed. Instead of a metal knob or leather pool, these have a forward facing knob to grab onto. Later on, I learned they can present an issue that I will go over in a second. This shoe tray fits the rear of the shoe like a glove. 
The support is great around the heel because of the U shape supports both left and right sides without forcing them out of shape. Because of the height of the shoe tray is even with the top of the heel, it creates a very clean visual from the side view. However, with this style, the upper of the sneaker doesn't get very much support. And as much as I like how these shoe trays aren't really visible from the side, this feature actually makes it very hard to take them out of my sneakers. You might say I need to push the shoe tray forward and then pull it, but it's actually really hard to push a heel shaped like this. There's nowhere for me to grab it properly and nothing I can actually push against. Also, because the fit at the heel is so perfect, there's more resistance when I try to pull the shoe tray out. Sometimes I get a little bit frustrated about this. Now this fifth shoe tray is another one that has the evenly divided split toe. The toe part is connected by a single spring bar to the heel, which is rounded with a metal knob at the top. It makes it really easy to insert into a shoe and pull it out again. It's just a great design overall. Instead of a narrow heel or small wood knob, the smooth rounded heel also provides great support to the rear of the shoe. In general, the main drawback I found about this kind of even divided split toe style is that they tend to have a lower upper. Because the support provided to the shoe tongue area is very limited, over time you will probably see creases begin to appear in that area. For example, for common projects, if you have a pair of shoe trays that provide decent upper support, the shoe tongue will usually be flat. If not, the shoe tongue will start to form a dome shape and you will see more noticeable creases where the shoe laces sit. Compared to the last pair of shoe trays we just reviewed, removing this one from a shoe is effortless. Just like that. Finally, I have a pair of plastic shoe trees. You might be wondering why I have these, since some of the main benefits of shoe trees that I addressed in the beginning are that wood helps absorb moisture and remove odor, which plastic definitely doesn't do that. The reason is because these are travel shoe trees. Plastic doesn't have the weight that wood does, which is an advantage for travel. However, because they don't have the moisture wicking properties, these type of shoe trays are more for short term use to prevent your shoes from being squished by all the other stuff you put into your luggage. The cool thing about these particular travel shoe trays is the mechanism in the middle. It's a little wheel that you can turn to expand the device. Before you insert this shoe tray, you should adjust it to its shortest length. When you first put it in, you notice that the heel part is loose and floppy. That's just because you need to adjust the length back out to fill your shoe. As to the support these shoe trays provide, since the shape is close to that of a foot, it provides great support around the toe box, heel, and upper parts. That's all the shoe trays I have. My favorite style is hands down this pair that I reviewed first. A split toe with adjustable spring bar support, higher upper, bonded heel, and metal pull knob made from unvarnished cedar wood. Now the question on everyone's mind is probably how much to spend on a pair of shoe trays. I would say it depends on the value of your shoes. Better shoe tree will of course have better craftsmanship and be made of better materials. If you have a pair of shoes that cost $400 to $600, spending $40 to $100 to increase their longevity is reasonable and will actually end up decreasing their cost per wear. Remember, no matter how good the quality of your shoes, they will start to show wear over time if you don't take proper care of them. I'll leave links in the description where you can purchase different shoe trees. Just leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for your time and see you in the next video.